So join the community page, sign up for the weekly newsletter, and if you want, my team members, they're awesome. We get to do free crafting classes, so join up or ask me about that. I have a deal coming up for you. I think there's something in the works that you might be able to jump in on. So let me know. Oh, good morning, Amy. How are you? And Betty, I'm glad you could join. So let me know in the comments below. Are you going to do one thing every day that scares you? Doing it will make you feel good. Could be laundry. Eh, I know. I'd like to put that on the list. Mine this week was definitely working with a new stamp set I have never done. No inspiration anywhere. I couldn't find it anywhere. Um, and I'm proud to say, conquered that. So, anyways, I have got two great cards for you using the stamp set, which is, can you get this? $23. $23. And these are fabulous. If you want, there is a coordinating die set, and you can cut the flowers out. So there you go. There's the flower. Oh, and they got little leaves. And there's the leaves there. Great stamp set. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. And if you do get it and you want some ideas or you want somebody to work with, let me know. I'm here for you. Leaving my full-time job is another scary thing. And heading into retirement, tick that off. Let's all move on to conquering the things that scare us. In the meantime, let's check out two new cards I created from inspiration that came from fabric. Isn't that great? Now, I am going to put you on the camera mount and hopefully this time it won't be upside down and backwards. So let's see if this works. All right. Okay, hold on ladies. Let's see if this works. Oh, it did. Fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. As I mentioned, my name is Tina Kavergich. You can always drop me an email. Always drop me an email at northernstamper at gmail.com. Um, if you want any, any, to purchase any items that you see here, just go to northernstamper.stampinup.net. Um, otherwise, drop me an email. I am happy to help you out. Don't forget. Tina Kavergich, name you can't say, or otherwise just call me Northern Stamper. All right, so I have two cards that we're going to do today. On my web, on my page, I had um, mentioned um, some fabric that gave me some ideas. So I'm going to hold off that one as our second card. So don't forget to comment below. I will try and keep an eye on it. Um, I do my best to try and and watch. So if you have a comment, I'd love, love, love to see it. All right. So let's get going. This uh, card we're creating today came from the inspiration, came from the catalog itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to look in the index for the, hoo -hoo, the stamp set, which is on page 114. I love this stamp set. I take it, this uh, catalog, I take it with me everywhere. So on this page, okay, I found um, the inspiration for this one came from this card in the top right corner. So what I did is I made some changes to this card, um, but basically it kind of follows along. So Inspiration comes from everywhere. All right. So, and this is the final card I came up with. And I'm going to show you how to make this. This is really a super simple card using um, a lot of the stamps and one little bit of the die. Okay. So, I am going to use two colors, which are balmy blue and pale papaya. Okay. Those are the two inks. So I have my items. Uh, there is my card base, and this is balmy blue. And where did the stamp set go? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this flower. There are 11 stamps in this whole set. So I'm going to take this one flower here, 
And you notice that I've got it now onto the stamp case, which is fa fantastic. They made some changes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stamp this flower on the card base in balmy blue. So let's get our balmy blue. Flip it open. Now, because when you stamp, do not have folded paper. You always want to have it flat. And because these are polymer, which means you can see through them, right? You can see through the block. I need something a little bit more underneath to give it some cushioning. So I'm going to use my, um, my foam mat, which is in the catalog. And because I'm going to be stamping off on the edge here, I am just going to use a piece of scrap paper. Okay, grab me a scrap paper. And I'm just going to look for the score line and I'm just going to hold it there as I do the edge. Okay, I think I need three hands here. So I'm going to ink it up with balmy blue. Hopefully you can see it. And I'm just going to stamp in a random pattern. Okay all the way around. So I've done the, that edge part so I can take this away now. Okay. Oop. You know what would be a good idea? Is if I put it underneath so I don't ink up my 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 mat. So I'm going to keep going, going off on the card. And it doesn't matter which way I go. I can go all higgledy-piggledy. I love those words. And uh, there we go. Now I know it's kind of uh, in the middle. I'm going to be put placing something. So it may hide some of that. You know what? I think for this card, I'm going to add a little bit more than what I did the first one. So you'll notice that there's a couple of little flowers in here. Let's grab that. I've got an idea. See, there we go. Stepping outside the box from what I did first. I love to make my own background stamp paper. So let's add some of these little flowers in here and there. They seem to fit. Whoops. Aha. See? On the edge. Tricky, tricky. Keep an eye out. And uh, I love this. I love how everything coordinates together. The colors, the paper, and... Uh, such like, can I fit it in anywhere else? I don't think so. I think that's it. There we go. That's good. That looks good. I love it. I love it. All right. So I have this background done all nicely stamped. That looks really pretty uh, just by itself. But what I want to do, I want to bring in these two pieces. There's another um, frame piece with scalloped edges I'm going to bring in and I'm going to stamp that piece also. Okay, I have two sizes because I wasn't sure which which size I want to use. So let's just do them both and we can figure it out later. So same idea, stamp in a random pattern, doesn't matter as long as you stamp straight up and down. Okay, that is the trick, stamping straight up and down. You'll notice um, on here, there is a little bit of ink. As long as I stamp straight up and down, everything will be okay. When you start rocking and rolling, that and that's when you have the the issues with um, getting on to the paper, the edges and stuff. So, all right. So I didn't know which one I want, so let's just do them both. And I'll add a couple of these. All right. Add them in. I think that's good enough. Okay. So I'm going to close up my ink for now because I uh, don't want to stick my finger in that. That'd be terrible. Okay. All right. So I got my two balmy blue pieces. I have my Knight of Nate, which is going to turn out to be a mat. All right. I'm going to put those together. What I do now is create... Um, the little stamp here, and then I'm going to die cut it out. So let's get a piece of cardstock, and I'm going to, hello, actually use the Knight of Navy ink to, to stamp my 
flower. Okay, so what I'm going to do, as you look, you'll see there's the outline of the flower itself. So we're going to grab that and place it on a block. Now you want to have a block that is the right size. So this block is size D. So it is a good size to have. Um, C and D are the most popular sizes that there are. Now I want to do the inside of the flower. Let's look. So I want to do the inside of the flower here. And when you look, there are two. There's one there for the top and a little flower for the center. Now I could add in another color. Maybe I should add in another color, but let's get that top one done. Okay, I'm gonna take them off the block. It's one of the great thing about these, they are all repositional. The blocks are very handy. Now, this is called two-step stamping because I've, step one, I've stamped the image. Now, step two, I am going to stamp inside. Uh, is it working? Voila! Don't look at that! So, I found out the name Batik is all of these little dots and lines. That is the reason that they call it that. Um, it's all of those little, those little um, lines and dots. Now I'm going to do the flower in the center. So I'm going to place it on a block, and this is block C, so it's a little smaller. You can see the size. And I'm going to ink it up. And as you can see, you can see through the, the block itself to the image. Let's see if I can get it. All right, I did it. So it that is called two-step stamping. So first step, the outline. Second step, the the petal part. Now what I have to do is cut out and, okay, I'm going to cut it out. And now these are the dies. I place them in a little baggie and I keep them together with the stamp set itself. So these dies, look at that. That will cut out a whole bunch of really cool stuff. But I'm looking for just the outline right now of the flower, so... This I'll keep in with the stamp set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my mini stamp emboss machine. Oh, I think I need a bigger table. So I'll get my little machine here. Okay. And I put down plate number one. I hope you can see this. I'm trying to keep it in the in the view. Plate number two, so this is the bottom that it's going to cut out onto. Now this paper is a little bit too big for it because this is the mini, so I'm just gonna cut this out a little bit so it fits through. All right, and I'm gonna lay down the, the die on top. Now, I'm just gonna add a little bit of tape. You could use washi tape, you can use painter's tape, I just use a little bit of scotch tape. I want to keep it in place so I don't want the die to move around and misalign the cut. I'm going to put another cutting plate on top and feed it through. This little machine is fantastic to have. If you like um, to cut um, die things out, so there we go, just take it out, pull off the tape. This is $89. And it is a small little one, so if you don't have much room, this works really well to have in your craft room. Oh, look at that, folds right up, just like a little panini maker. Oh, that's what I call it, the, my little panini maker. So there we go. I have my flower. I have all of my elements. There's a large and a small. I don't know which one I'm going to use yet. You're going to help me. Now, I also have to make a sentiment. So I am going to just use a little piece of uh, this basic white and I'm going to look for a sentiment. And I'm just going to use create with friends. And I really like how this works. Uh, I love, love, love the 
the font style in this stamp set, which I will showcase another day. But in the meantime, let's see. It Does it fit? Does it fit? So I want it to fit. It just fits. It is on an angle. I do that on purpose. Every video I see, I do that on purpose so that it forces me to look through and, oh, maybe I want a little bit more room to look through and focus on the stamp and not the block. Look at that. Isn't that a great font? Love it. So I'm going to cut this out. And we're going to just, I'm just going to do a straight cut. And there we go. Does it look nice and even on the top and bottom? It does. And let's just kind of, I'm going to leave one edge. Uh, let's flag that edge here. And I'm going to use a punch that allows me to easily flag the end. If, uh, you know me, I cannot make fishtails worth beans. So I always have to use that, mach that machine, that little punch. Some people can cut it out, but oh, it never works for me. So I have my sentiment. I have my two sides. Let's bring in the card and put it together. All right, so there is our card base. Oop. Oop, come on. There is our card base nicely stamped with balmy blue. I'm going to place this on. And actually, to add some elevated design, I'm going to pop these up on dimensionals. So this sits a little higher on the card. I think that adds a little bit. Okay, let's do that. Put the dimensionals. Now I'm going to lay this on top, just in the middle. Now, when you look in the catalog on page 114, you'll see it's similar to that, but I just use different colors. I'm just looking for some ribbon. Now, I have the choice. I can use the large one or the smaller one, but I think that's too small. So we'll hold on to that. I'll use that for something else. I'm going to place this one that's one size down. So this is a die set. So they have a couple of sizes. And so if you look one, two, and then that would be three. Hey, that looks kind of cool too. Wow, that's kind of interesting. How would that look? Wow, that's kind of... See, got to do something scary every day. I'm just going to leave it like that. Okay, we're going to add some adhesive. Oh, sometimes this happens. Gets a little excited. Wants to keep the paper. Gonna add that on top. What do you think of the colors so far? I am going to add, we can do that. You know what? I have some white ribbon. This is crinkle seal ribbon. And if I want, I could color it with blends. Do we want to add a little bit of ribbon to that? Does it need it? Do you think? Let me know. Does it need ribbon? Should it be without ribbon? Should I have ribbon on the bottom? Let me know. Okay. Do I need to make a bow? Let's see. You can't go wrong with creating. Creating is, oh, look at that. Oh, that's kind of interesting. You can't go wrong. And you know what? When you create and you think that you can't do something or you think it's wrong, you know what? That is that portion of your brain that is telling you that you can't do it. You just tell that to take a hike because crafting and creating is all about mistakes. All about mistakes. And sometimes those mistakes, and usually those mistakes turn out to be the most wonderful things that have ever come out. So I have now the flower. Where's our dimensionals? Let's put our flower on dimensionals. Okay. All right. Put that on top. Have it hanging over a little bit. 
<clears throat> and let's get that bow on, which I didn't have before, because why not? It looked good. Step outside that box and just do it. Just like that Nike commercial. Oh my God, that looks fantastic. Now, if you want to add a little bit of bling, add some embellishments on there, or you can always touch it up with some Wink Estella. Be carefully add a little bit of Wink Estella to get some, some shimmer and shine, right? You can always do that. That just adds a little bit. Wink Estella is an undervalued, like this thing is fantastic. 11 bucks. This thing's, I have had it now for four years. Love it. So there is card number one. So there is my initial card. And I think it looks really good. I added a little bit more. Is it still in the, the, the frame? I added a little bit more, changed the words, added a bow. Um, you'll see the original card has it does have stamps around it, but this one has a lot more. I think I like this one more. Which one do you prefer, the bow or the non-bow? Let me know. I'm curious. Okay, so fantastic. I love that. Great, great color. Okay, let's move on to the one that I had posted about that actually got me thinking as a challenge. All right, so I'm telling you I am doing this blind. A lot of my cards are, are done blind. So what I'm using is Cherry Cobbler. I am using Knight of Navy. And I'm using my Stampin' Blends. I love Stamping Blends. Love them. Love them. All right. Let's get our card. Let's see how this turns out. Whew, I'm kind of nervous. But that's okay. It scares me. It's one of those days that scares me. Okay, so I got some some cardstock. I have some basic white. I have embossed this with the subtle embossing folder. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, so I embossed it just to give it a little bit of design as opposed to flat on flat. I also pre-cut these because I needed the larger die cut machine. So there are dies that um, it's called basic basic borders. And I just needed to use that and because it doesn't fit through the little mini. So what I'm going to do is I am going to start with this piece of basic white, which I've already flagged on the end. And I'm going to take my stamp set, which is, um, sorry, my ink pad. And I'm going to stamp three flowers. Okay. Ooh, look at that. And ooh, let's see how that turns out. Knight of Navy. Oh, okay. As long as I stamp straight up and down, I should be okay. I am going to start with the one in the middle. So I'm going to start in the middle. Okay. One. And I'm going to go down a little bit so that it fits all in. Two. Whoa. Got to be a little careful there. I'm starting to rock and roll. And three. So I got the three on there. I want to add a little bit of flowers in the bottom. In the stamp set are these gorgeous, gorgeous little flowers. We used this one before. Let's use this. This is actually, I think, one of my favorite ones in here. So where'd it go? Okay, let's oops, place that on a block. Oops, sorry. Don't mean to make so much noise. Okay, and I'm going to stamp. Oop, I should have a little thing underneath because I don't want to ruin it. Put my mat underneath and I'm going to just fill in those spaces. You notice how it kind of wise there and it fits right in between right underneath. So I'm going to go a little higher. It looks like it tucks in perfectly. Perfectly. These are fantastic. Look at that. I love that. Okay. So that was the flower, and now I'm going to do the inside, and I am actually going to use the Cherry Cobbler color. And this is where I got my idea from that piece of fabric. So there's the Knight of Navy that was in there, and now I'm using the Cherry Cobbler. So the inside of that flower, so there's the flower, there's the inside. 
with the little, you know, the little dots and the, the lines I told you about. I'm going to place that on a block. Now, I want a block that it fits. So there's one. Let's see if I can get a smaller block and see if that fits a little better. Okay, that is block A. So this is the, the smallest block that you can get. So I'm going to use that because it's just a little easier. And now, two-step stamping. All right, let's see if I can get it. Bear with me. Hold on. Okay. Oh, oh. <gasps> next one. Okay, it's more difficult than laundry. Oh, a little off, but that's okay. I forgive myself. Oh, that one was just perfect. Oh, my gosh. Who says that crafting is not as exciting as sporting events? Ah, they don't know what they're talking about. Okay. All right. Now, I have those stamped. Where did my little piece of paper go? Now, I'm going to color these with some Stampin' Blends. I love Stampin' Blends. If you know me and you follow me, you know how much I love Stampin' Blends. So I'm going to use the two colors. Uh, one is Balmy Blue. Uh, so I got the dark and the light. And I'm actually going to use one of the colors called Night of Navy. Now this is the dark Night of Navy. And you'll notice there are two ends. There's a brush end and a nib end. So the brush end is like a paintbrush. And the nib end is a little bit, it's like a pen, but so it's a little bit more of a point. You have more control. I'm going to use that end. And what I'm going to do is color in these little bottom portions of the petal. Now the reason I'm doing that is because I looked at the pattern that I got the idea from and it had various shades of blue. Okay. Ooh. Careful. There we go. And that's what I want to do is I'm using the various shades of blue. So I'm using the controlled end of the blend. This goes on really well. I like it better than markers because with markers, you can always see the lines. With the Stampin' Blends, because they're alcohol base, they, you don't see those lines as like you do, uh, the markers. It kind of blends away. And if you really want, you can use another color to make it not such a harsh line. So I'm carefully coloring. Sorry, this takes a little longer. I just don't want to color outside the line. So I'm going to just, I'm just using the little tip. Doesn't that look great? Looks great. I love this. So we're going to keep going. So these Stampin' Blends come two in a pack for $12. And I use them so much. Okay. So I've got the, that is the Knight of Navy. And let's add some balmy blue. I'm going to add the dark balmy blue. So just to check, I'm going to, oh, okay, there we go. Always write on up the paper. Check it out. Again. All controlled. There we go. Have any of you ever tried the Stampin' Blends? Um, let me know in the comments below. I'm curious. I'm not, I don't know how many people have ever tried it, but I'm telling you, once you try one set of Stampin' Blends, you'll be hooked for life. If you're like me and you love to color, these are what you want to purchase. Okay. Bear with me. I'm almost done. Okay. It looks like I got a little smudge on my paper. I guess I'm going to have to figure out how to fix that. When in doubt, when you make a mistake, add an embellishment. That's what we'll do. 
Okay. Almost done. One more leaf. Here we go. Okay. I am going to need your help, ladies. All right. So I have that done. There's a little smudge there, but that's okay. Um, so I have it. I'm going to mount it on a piece of cherry cobbler cardstock, which I cut these two out at the same time to make sure that they are exactly on the same angle. Oh, is this done? Dude, are you finished? Oh, finished. Dude, you're finished. All right. We'll get you another one. Ta-da! Oh, that one was not happy that I called him out. Okay. All right, so I'm going to lay that on, and I want a little edge all the way around. So there is the cherry cobbler and the red. Looks like I'm going to be cutting that guy off. All right, let's take in R. There we go. Our <laughs> piece of basic white that has embossed. Now, if I want, before I glue this down, I could, if I want, always add a piece of ribbon. Now, this is white. Now, to me, it's going to be kind of, um, you won't see much of it. So what if, because the great thing about this crinkle seam ribbon is that you can color it with Stampin' Blends. So what I'm going to do is lay it down. And I'm just going to drag along. You do not want to use the tip of your Stampin' Blend. You want to angle it and drag it along, okay? And this Crinkle Seal ribbon absorbs the color really, really well, especially with the Stampin' Blends. See, it's a very light color. Don't use the tip because once it's uh, splayed apart, that's it. That's the end of it. So there we go. I'm going to let this dry for a minute, okay? And in the meantime, let's put that up there. In the meantime, I'm going to put that there. You're going to help me. Okay, we've got our card base, which is a Knight of Navy. Now, there's the white. I don't want it. Oh, that actually looks pretty good. I want it another color in between the basic white and the blue. Now, the question is, do I want it with balmy blue cut in between? Or do I want it with the cherry cobbler? So I need you to help me decide which one do, should I place in between as a match. Should it be the cherry cobbler or should it be the balmy blue? I didn't know which one to do. So you let me know which one you think would work the best. Oops, where's the white? There we go. Should it be balmy blue or red? Oh, that looks so nice. I'd say maybe I need all three of them. <laughs> hey, that actually looks really cool. I could probably do all three. Anyways, red or blue? Oh, balmy blue is the winner. Okay, we will do the balmy blue. What I'm going to do is I'm going to place the balmy blue on the cards on the card base. In the meantime, my ribbon should be dry. Now put that down as a mat. Oh, careful. Careful. There we go. I'm going to take my piece of basic white and I'm going to make a little bow. Now that it should be all nice and dry, the alcohol color in the Stampin' Blends does dry fairly quickly but I like to give it a, a just a, a little bit of extra time. I'm going to make a little bow. I'm going to stick it on one side, tie it around the back. All right. And bring it all the way across. Now, this part will be all hidden anyway, so it doesn't matter. I'm just going to cut it off, save some of my ribbon, because the only thing you're really going to see is this one sticking out on that side. So let's just add a little piece of tape. Okay, I am going to put my card down. Now it does run over, like my cup. My cup runneth over. So I'm just going to adhere that down, and then I'm just going to cut off that extra edge. 
Okay, tuck it under the bow as far as it can go. Oh, I'm Dr. Seuss, I'm rhyming. Okay, let's get our trimmer. And I'm just gonna trim this off. Okay, there we go. Okay, and now there is a little smudge there. So let's see what I got in my case of, ooh, pearls. Ooh, great. What else have I got? Oh my goodness. I've got red. Should I do red? No, no, no. Okay. I'm going to hide that little smudge. When in doubt, add an embellishment. Boop. These little smudges bothering me. That's okay. Remember, everything's okay. It was a bit of a mistake, but I will work around it. Add another one. Should I do it here? Oh, down here. And I always go with the elements of three up here. Down, oh, right there. There we go. Elements of three. Remember that from art class? Okay. Got that. And now I'm going to adhere it onto the card base. Okay. I'm using actually a lot of tape. That really doesn't need that much tape, but it's okay. And there we go. Ooh, Wink Estella. Wink Estella, ladies. Oh, hey, look, I missed a leaf. Okay, that was a dark, balmy blue. Always remember what color you use. I missed a leaf. All right. Sorry about that. I just was so excited coloring. And like I said, this was inspired by that pattern of fabric I found. So now, even though there's not very many designs out there from this stamp set, look at that. I created my own using my own designs. There we go. Oh, and we should add a little sentiment. We could always add a little sentiment on the inside or place it on the outside if you like. I don't know. I kind of like it the way it is. Let me know what you think. So, there we go. There are our cards today. Let me know, do you like bow versus no bow? Or, our red and blue versus bow? I'd like to know. Comment below. Don't forget, hop over to the community page, be a part of the community, and let's have some creative fun. My name is Tina Kavergich, northernstamper at gmail.com. One second. One second. I want to say goodbye. And there we go. I hope it has inspired you. Remember, do something that scares you every day, whether it's crafting, laundry, or something else. I enjoy spending my time with you, and I will see you next time. Check out the community page, join the email list, and I will send you some special happy mail. I will be doing something special on the community page. I don't know what it is yet, but those people in my community always get something a little extra. See you next time.